I was making fun of it last week about Robert Sala's beard. Last night, it kind of bothered me. And I got no problem. I understand, like, I make fun of Ryan Day for coloring his beard. But I do understand recruiting, college football, little little different animal. How you present yourself kind of matters, right? There's a reason Nick Saban is always dressed really nice. I, I personally think it's a little overrated, but in the South, he's old school. I get it. So Ryan Day colors his beard, probably wants to look a little younger when he's recruiting. And based on the recruiting, it's working. It's not like it's not working. So while I can make fun of him being the spokesman for Just for Men, I, I get it. Like that's, he's being a salesman as a college coach is a big part of your job. As an NFL coach, absolutely nobody cares what you look like. Whether you're fat, whether you're skinny, whether you're short, whether you're tall, whether you're bald, whether you got gray hairs everywhere, it does not matter one iota. It's completely irrelevant. I mean, the best coach in the league, Andy Reid, is a big boy, and he's been big for a long time. The guy before him that was widely considered the greatest coach of all time is a short, lumpy guy named Bill Belichick. What you look like, who cares? And I was thinking about this. Robert Sala, unless his wife, if I, if I own the Jets, if his, if his wife mandates that he colors his beard, then listen, happy wife, happy life. But if she's got nothing to do with it, and honestly watching him, I thought, why is he obsessed with how he looks? When his, you can't be worried about shit like that when you lose. Like, you, you don't have a winning record. You, you're not like the number one seed. You, you, you're struggling. You're holding on for dear life to be above 500, to be a 500 football team. And you're coloring your beard? Like, what are we doing? The, you should be worried about one thing and one thing only. How do we get first downs? What can I do as a head coach working with my general manager to improve our offense? I'm the head coach. What I look like is completely irrelevant, right? It, it does not matter. My team, my offense is broken. This guy we drafted number two overall, clearly he's never going to live up to the billing, but he, he's sailing the boat right now. It, it, no one else can help us. We didn't trade for anybody. This is our guy. How can I help him? And I, and I do think that reflects like our priorities in the right spot. And I like Robert Sala. I'm a Robert Sala fan. And I, at first when I was making fun of him for the no gray hairs, it, I, I was joking. It really kind of hit me last night. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> what are we thinking about, Robert? We thinking about our next career in media? You, you want to call football games for CBS or Fox? Do you know you're going to get fired? Is that, is that what we're doing here? Because that's what it kind of feels like. And on the flip side, I think Mark Davis desperately wants for just Antonio Pierce to win some games and have to hire him. I think as an owner, once you hire a coach as you know to be your full-time head coach, the last thing in the world you want to do is go through that process again. Interview a bunch of people. You got to cut checks to pay people to go away. You got to, this guy's going to have a bunch of wants. You got to pay all his coordinators. Financially, it costs you a lot of money. You got to meet all these new people. It's a pain in the ass. The best case scenario, Lions hire Dan Campbell. It works and we go. Rams hire McVay. Niners hire Shanahan. You're just my coach for a while. I don't even have to think about like, who are the best coordinators? Who do I need to interview? We got to do Zoom. Then we got to fly to them. Then I got to fly to me. It's like, it's a pain in the ass, right? You would always rather just hire the right guy and never have to worry about it. But when you do hire the wrong guy, you better make the move fast. And I gave Mark Davis credit for that. But just a couple of years ago, and we've talked about this before, he regrets, he doesn't regret it, but clearly it did not work out when he didn't hire Rich and he went with Josh McDaniels. He wants to hire Antonio Pierce. And listen, do, are the Raiders that much better? That they're The same guys are rolling out there than when Josh McDaniels was a coach a couple of weeks ago. They don't look that dramatically different from a personnel standpoint. They clearly are playing harder, and they 100% like this guy dramatically more. But, like, I watch Max Crosby. He's been playing this hard. Whether Josh McDaniels coached him, whether Mike Mayock was the general manager, whether Antonio Pierce is coaching the team. The guy plays his ass off every snap, whether me and you were on the sideline. But there is a different energy when you watch them play. Now, it's going to get a lot harder. They still play the Chiefs. This week, they play the Dolphins. Like, are they some real contender now? I wouldn't go that far. But if I'm Mark Davis, like, I'm two games in. I feel like I made the right move. And they're 5-5. Five and five, So they have seven games left. 
I think if he can get to nine and eight, now I don't think nine and eight gets in the playoffs, but I think nine and eight gets him the job. Now it might not be one of these six year contracts like Josh McDaniels got or Dan Campbell got. That's not going to happen, but maybe he gives them like a three year deal. And Antonio Pierce is at minimum the coach for the next several years. And it just kind of mellows everything out because they do have a lot of really good players. I mean, they got one of the best pass rushers in the league. They got one of the best wide receivers in the league. They have other good offensive weapons like Jacoby Myers, is a good player. Obviously, Hunter Renfro has proven he's one of the better slots. Josh Jacobs is a stud at running back. Uh, they, 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 they shouldn't have been as bad as they were. And I also think that reflects why so many executives and owners often butt heads with their head coach because coaches will do such short-sighted things. Well, Brian Hoyer, he knows the offense. It's like, Brian Hoyer sucks. I don't care if he knows every offense that every coach in football has ever created. If we play this guy, we are going to lose. Like That's a fact, Jack. We, we cannot start this guy in 2023 and think we have any chance to win, even if it's on the road against a team starting a Division II quarterback. And you see Aiden O'Connell. Is Aiden O'Connell the next Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen? Of course not. But does Aiden O'Connell give them some life and give them some juice? Hell yeah. So I'm rooting for Antonio Pierce. And I would say right now, just find a way to go four and three in these last seven games and the job's yours.